Criminal or whistleblower? Hero or traitor? Edward Snowden continues to capture headlines across the country. After the former NSA contractor revealed to the UK Guardian the NSA's tracking and collection of personal information on hundreds of millions of Americans. For the last week, every major news organization in America has begun a trial in the court of public opinion. But what is happening is all about the messenger. Very little has been said about his message. And the question media is not asking, who here actually committed a crime? The first step in full disclosure, inform. Edward Snowden shocked the world when he sat down exclusively with the UK Guardian's Glenn Greenwald. The NSA has an internal government computer system called PRISM. That's what he reported. How it works? Under secret court orders, the NSA has been collecting two things. Foreign online communications, including email, chat, and VOIP communications. The second, gathering metadata relating to millions of phone calls, which could reveal the location of callers, but not the content of the calls. That's the most technical explanation of PRISM. In short, since 2007, phone and tech companies, including reportedly Google, YouTube, Microsoft, Skype, Facebook, Apple, AOL, and others, have been required to provide backdoor access to the NSA, though the exact details of those companies' agreements and all the ways they share data have not been revealed. And that the NSA has been tracing calls from every Verizon and Sprint customer gathering that metadata. Now, among the latest claims, in 2008, Yahoo actually fought the order to hand over information as being unconstitutional until the court ordered them to comply. Also, in 2008, Congress gave the Department of Justice the authority to make reluctant companies comply. So that is what the NSA has been doing. The man who brought it to light? Edward Snowden, a name you know by now. Snowden was working as an NSA contractor for Booz Allen Hamilton as an intelligence analyst. He told The Guardian that he couldn't live with what the NSA was doing. Well, I, sitting at my desk, uh, certainly had the authorities to, to wiretap anyone from you or your accountant to a federal judge to even the president if I had a personal email. Now, it's important to understand who Snowden is because the first question is, is Snowden credible as a whistleblower? Well, clearly he is, but is he also a criminal? Speaker of the House John Boehner, Senators John McCain and Dianne Feinstein, former Vice President Dick Cheney have all come out calling Snowden a traitor who should be tried for treason. Former UN Ambassador John Bolton says that Snowden committed an act of war against the United States by revealing this information. FBI Director Robert Mueller says the Bureau was doing everything it can to track down Snowden, who appears to be off the grid in Hong Kong. Now, the push against Snowden isn't coming only from lawmakers and elected officials. The Associated Press has told all of its member agencies to refer to Snowden only as a leaker, not a whistleblower. Full disclosure here, according to the Whistleblower Protection Act of 1989, the WPA protects government employees from retaliatory action for voluntarily disclosing information about either dishonest or illegal activities occurring in a government agency which means the real question surrounding Snowden actually surrounds the NSA. Snowden is only a whistleblower if he revealed something illegal. While it's certainly unethical, is the PRISM program by the NSA illegal? Well, Congress, the NSA, and the White House all say no. Simply put, the PRISM program, they claim, is legal and is authorized by the FISA Act, which was reauthorized in 2007, it authorizes bulk collection of telephone records, and by the Patriot Act's Section 215. There are two lawsuits, though, one by the ACLU and the other by Larry Klayman, the former chairman of Judicial Watch. They say the whole program is illegal, that the program violates both the Constitution of the United States and federal law, specifically breach of privacy, freedom of speech, freedom of association, and due process rights. So who's right? Well, consider this. The Patriot Act is without question a law that in many ways overreaches constitutionally protected rights of U.S. citizens. But even within that overreach, Section 215 requires the government to provide facts to show that the information that they are gathering relates to a foreign intelligence or terrorism investigation. Is it possible that the NSA was doing that through PRISM? that among the millions and millions of Verizon customers, there are cases where the NSA was investigating connections to terrorism. Yeah, it is possible. 
But what's not possible is that every single Verizon customer, even more so, that every wireless customer in America has made calls relating to a foreign intelligence or terrorism investigation. In short, what the media has not told you and what most lawmakers won't admit to is that even by the overreaching standards of the Patriot Act, what the NSA has been doing and is still doing is clearly illegal. So what you need to know, well, that is actually the fundamental question of our time. Here it is. Forget email and phone records and fear of terrorism. The real question, do you possess any actual rights? If the Constitution guarantees your protection from unlawful search and seizure, guarantees freedom of speech, freedom of association, due process when charged with a crime, and yet all of those rights can be suspended, not because you are a terrorist per se, but because the government wants to know if you might be a terrorist or might be connected to a terrorist, then you never actually had those rights in the first place. So when you hear someone say, hey, if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about. What they're actually saying is, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't need to have rights. Benjamin Franklin saw it very differently, saying those who would trade essential liberty for temporary safety deserve neither and lose both. And that is full disclosure. Well, now that you've been informed, it's time to get engaged. Head over to BenSwan.com and there you will find the PDF of this show as well as more information on what the NSA has been doing. Plus you can read the full section 215 of the Patriot Act yourself and you will have the opportunity to upload your own content. Get engaged right now at BenSwan.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed that show and found it to be educational and informational, but most importantly, meaningful to the national conversation. That was just a limited preview of Ben Swan Full Disclosure. Through our Kickstarter project and fully funded episodes, we'll be able to do even more, including having interview guests and experts on various subjects in various fields. We want to elevate the national conversation. That's what the Truth in Media project on Kickstarter is really all about. It's about restoring journalism and the fourth estate in this country. For years, I've heard people say that journalism in this country is broken, that it needs to be restored and it needs to be fixed. I can't do that alone. I need your help to get it done. Go to kickstarter.com, search for the Truth in Media project, or just click on the link at the end of this show. There you'll be able to contribute. Thousands of you already have, and I thank you for that but we need thousands more. And I'm not talking about dollars here. I'm talking about thousands of people stepping up and doing more than just being hearers, being doers, changing the national conversation. The bottom line here, this project cannot and will not get done without your help.